Welcome friends to another r slash I don't work your lady video. As always, if you enjoy this video, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And our story of the days by Wandering Black Cat, My Asian Curse, or A Bucket List of Revenge Worldwide. Here is a compilation of many events that occurred in my life so far, dealing with racist and entitled people. Not here to complain, but mostly to have fun and share some good stories. At the time of the story, I was in my early 20s. I was born in a European country, and my parents are from Southeastern Asia. I won't tell what countries, but you know the deal. They gave me an Asian name, which is totally fine, but this would be a curse for my whole life. Kids made fun of my name, no one knew how to pronounce it, I know it's hard, so I brushed it off. Trouble started for real when I turned legally able to work. For the context, yeah, I'm Asian, my family came to this country after war, and my parents could barely speak the local language at the time. So they build like the most Asian stereotype business, an Asian restaurant. We had tight finances so we always had to help in the restaurant to save costs. I hated that as I could never have time to enjoy weekends as Saturday and Sundays were our busiest days. But thanks to that I got a lot of experience working in the hospitality field. I know how to run all positions and being a jack of all trades. For your information, I was working since I was 12. Once I turned legally able to work, I wanted to bring more money into the family and make a budget to go to university. Here's where the trouble begins. I became a temp work during my first years, taking all the jobs I can to pay for my tuition fees. Carpenting, retail job, factory worker, cleaner, many jobs that people hate, but money's money so it was all good. Once I got my bachelor degree majoring in business and marketing, I started to look for more serious positions while attending my master degree. I went to the National Employment Agency, which is our mandatory place to look for a job if we're unemployed or if we want to apply for unemployment benefits. Everyone is assigned a counselor who's a government employee and usually they don't know so much about how to find a job, unfortunately. My counselor started the interview with, Hello OP, sorry if I don't pronounce your name correctly. That's all good, I understand how hard some names can be to pronounce. I see you're bilingual, so you speak, insert Asian country, and country I was born, so here, right? I answered, no, if you check my resume, which is in your hand, you'll read that I was born here, and by bilingual, I mean country I'm living in, and English. I also speak other languages, such as my mother and father, but I was born here. After exchanging the few words to introduce myself and my skills, she grabs a few job offers, only dealing with fast food. Nothing against fast food, part-time minimum wage job offers. Um, sorry, but like I mentioned on my application, I'm looking for jobs in the marketing field as I graduated from X field, I said. Yes, but your main experience is dealing with restaurants. I don't know why you would want to do any other job. I say basically because I graduated from university and did restaurant jobs to pay for my tuition maybe. They say you don't have enough experience in that field. I say yeah, because I'm a graduate. I did several training courses. Very bad pay, but yeah, you're there to learn. In this company, this one, and this one as well. They say sorry, but most companies want graduates with two years of significant experience. Not your kind of application. I was dumbfounded. I kept my cool and asked, so can you define what is a graduate? They say it's a person who just finished university program and is ready to start working. I say, all right, so tell me now how a person with two years of experience can be considered a graduate. They say, well, after finishing university, that person works two years in his field. What is that question about? I say, now tell me how a person who just graduated from university can get a job in his field if all companies want someone who just finished university and had already two years of experience. She, the counselor, did not say a word. I say no worries if I can't get a job that way. As you can see, I hold a bachelor degree. Therefore, I'm also interested in becoming a B or A government employee. I've seen on the government website that some positions may be available in that field and she interrupted me. You know, government jobs are tough. These kinds of jobs are so much easier. You should take it. I read the offer. To make it short, fast food, dealing with fried chicken, part time, minimum wages, far from my location. She says, you can almost make the minimum wages every month. You can work about 20 hours per week. That's amazing, isn't it? She insisted on that. I say, that is perhaps, but that's not what I'm looking for. Like I told you, I'd like to know more about government jobs and... She interrupted me again. 
Listen, the job market is pretty unsafe. You should be grateful to be able to get a job. I say, sorry, but I don't want this kind of job. There is no stupid job, I know it, but I didn't go to university to end up working in fast food. She looked down on me. Well, take it or leave it. But if you don't take it, we can cut out all subsidiaries you get from the country. Student benefits. I left, and unfortunately, since I didn't get a job from there, I would be forced to attend a meeting with her every month to update my working situation. My revenge bucket list started. I'll prove I can do everything myself. I started looking for all kinds of positions, including restaurant positions and other fast food chains, closer to my living place. I didn't want to ask for money from my family, as they were also struggling. I applied to a position as a marketing assistant in a hotel, and here is how I was welcomed by the receptionist. Me, wearing a suit. Hello, I'm here for the interview. My name is... She interrupted me. Sorry, kitchen's not hiring at the moment. I say, I'm not here for a kitchen position. I'm here for the marketing assistant position. She took her time to look at me and said, I'm sorry, I thought... I say, because I'm Asian, I'm supposed to be working in a kitchen. She blushed. I laughed and told her it was okay and, indeed, I did work in a kitchen for a while. We laughed and I went to the interview. I didn't get the job, fine by me. But deep inside, I was getting really upset about getting this same perception as being a foreigner in my own home country. Later on, I got an interview at Subway and here's how the interview went. Um, I think you don't have enough experience in that field. I say, I've been working 10 years in restaurants, 22 at the time. I know all kinds of positions, waiter, dishwasher, ask me anything. I also speak five languages. They say, yeah, but no, I'm sorry, but you don't have the experience we're looking for. I say, if you can't hire someone with 10 years of experience, what kind of workers are you looking for? No reply from the manager, but then she told me the following. What you should do is get some experience from other restaurants, and then when you have more experience, come back here and apply. Again, I was dumbfounded. You know I'm looking for a job as a student, right? They say yes. I say, so if I get a job at another restaurant, why would I want to apply here after? She says, oh yeah, that is a good question. Then she realized how stupid this advice was. I ended up not having this job, but found a great opportunity in a nice hotel restaurant facing that subway. No interview required as the hotel were desperate for staff. I applied online and the HR told me they didn't need a receptionist, the position I was applying for, but they did need a dishwasher. I accepted the position as I could do it after university classes. I started as a dishwasher and worked hard, but noticed that most servers didn't try to make our life easier. They never scraped dishes and just threw their plates on our working station with all the food on top. Maybe they're just busy at the front, so I thought. They were not. The restaurant was not good. Service was bad. Waiters and managers were watching their phones on duty and barely cleaned the restaurant. As a worker in this industry, I was raised that if you have time to play with your phone, then you can clean or talk to guests. I was at the bottom chain, so I bared with it, but even on our easy days, waiters didn't make an effort to scrape their dishes and kept ignoring me when I asked them. You're just the dishwasher for God's sake. That's your job, I heard a few times. Even managers yelled at me for starting scenes and arguments with the waiters. I got enough and emailed the HR about this. I knew I could be fired for that, as I'm just a dishwasher. I bring everything I felt was awful and responsible for our bad business. Glasses were not being polished at the bar. Servers and managers were not providing a good service. Food is awesome, but it's just sad that people bringing it weren't smiling. Tables are unclean, etc. HR reported that to the managers, and I got scolded again. Then one manager challenged me. Do you really think our job is easy? I say, I never said that. They say, okay, I'll make you a server for one week, and you'll see how hard our job is. I say, fine by me. Then begins their demise, and a few more names on that bucket list. Most front staff didn't like me because of my report, but I wanted to show them how to properly work in a restaurant. I do respect people with more experience than me, but if they're doing their job correctly. I took on my own time to check all cutlery, scrape dishes to the dishwashers, talk with guests, learnt the menu, learned how to sell the menu, and make recommendations. I asked guests to write reviews about me on their website, as it would be proof of my working skills. The week went by, as the manager in charge, the one who never scraped her dishes, told me that I was laid off, as I did not bring anything new. 
This conversation was heard by the hotel owner who was in the next office and overheard it. He got there and argued, What are you talking about? He's doing a great job. Haven't you seen all those positive reviews? The owner took his time to show reviews of our hotel to the manager and he was pissed off. The owner said he deserves a raise, guests are really happy. Even if it's only been a week, we haven't had great reviews like that for a while. I got promoted and became not only a waiter, but I also worked as a host and at the hotel reception, filling all the gaps and positions needed. I became an asset for the hotel and within six months got promoted as the restaurant manager. The former manager was being let go after too many altercations. He tried many times to fire me on the spot, but the staff from the hotel, because staff between hotel and restaurant were different usually, and guests, were always here to back me up. Some reviews I've received were not only positive, but written in different languages, as our foreign guests were also happy, and I was one of the few waiters able to speak English, Spanish, and a few Asian languages. As I was promoted to manager, I set a lot of the new rules that just make sense in many restaurant businesses, like no phone on the floor, if your section isn't busy, help other waiters, scrape your dishes, respect all team members, being a server or a bartender does not put you at a better position than dishwashers or kitchen hands. It looks barbarian, but as we expected, many waiters didn't want to comply with those rules. So when they refused to scrape dishes, I simply asked the dishwasher to take a smoke break or a small break to relax and would put the bad waiters to work as dishwashers. We aren't paid to be dishwashers, you can't do that. I say I can and I will do it. Your contract states you're a hospitality worker. Nothing is specified if you're a bartender, a cleaner, a front staff or a dishwasher. Therefore, you all get the same wages unless you're specifically hired as a senior waiter or bartender or mixologist. Some waiters learned the hard way. Some refused and quit. I, even as a manager, kept helping dishwashers as much as I would help other positions. I fired the cleaners who were always showing up late and didn't make any effort to clean the toilets and washers and taught my staff how to do it properly. I fired about 50% of the whole crew and hired brand new people and taught them everything myself. All of that happened because no one cared about scraping their freaking dishes. To my surprise, the manager from Subway came to have lunch at our place and did recognize me. They said, oh, you applied to my place a few months ago, right? I say, yes, I'm surprised you still remember me. They say, how are things going for you? I say, well, as you can see, I did well, got enough time to work on my master degree, and I work here as the restaurant manager. The restaurant manager, she said, surprised. I said, yes, I started from the bottom, but now I can proudly say that I'm in charge of that restaurant now. She says, that is great, glad for you. The tone was unsure. So, if I were asking you if you were interested in a manager's assistant position in Subway now, would you be interested? She asked. I wanted to stay polite, so I simply replied, That would be great, but I'm now deeply involved in this business, and the owner gave me the opportunity to use my skills here, so I'll keep working hard here. I hope you can give that opportunity to someone who deserves it. That person wasn't on my bucket list, as she didn't personally harm me, but her speech about how to get hired left a bitter taste in my mouth. She congratulated me, and we remained good neighbors. Another occasion is when I arrived at the hotel wearing casual clothes and was stopped by a brand new staff whom I hadn't met yet. They say, hum, sir, you can't go there. It's the manager's office. The kitchen is on the other side. Again, I thought. What makes you think I work in the kitchen? He looked a little bit surprised. He says, well, if you don't work in the kitchen, the cleaning staff have the room on the side as well. I say, you're the new staff, right? They say, um, yes. I showed my hand waiting for a handshake. I'm OP, the restaurant manager. The guy blushed and looked as red as he had eaten a full bottle of hot sauce. He apologized, but I told him it was fine. Just don't presume things. That may cost you a lot from time to time. He became very good staff. Next name on my bucket list, the unemployment agency lady. For months, she never tried to learn how to pronounce my name. I know they have many people to care about, but isn't their job at least to try? So, OP, how's your job research? I say, good, still working as a restaurant manager, but I'm taking care of the marketing part and work with the hotel staff as well to find a solution to improve the business and promote local culture. But I still look for better opportunities regarding jobs I can get when I would graduate. 
Again, she brought a lot of offers, only dealing with food and beverages in fast food or restaurant chains, and not even for managing positions. You know that I have to ask days off from my job and skip classes from uni to come here, right? She nodded. My resume's been updated, and I build more and more skills throughout the months. So why do you keep sending me the same offers over and over? I added. She says job market's tough, and your resume's only about restaurant, food, and beverage services. I say, but what about the business development part I'm bringing in my current position and the marketing part I'm involved in? She says, that's still a restaurant. Anyone can do it. I say, anyone can do it? Are you sure? She started to lose her temper. Listen, we have meetings every month and you never accepted any offers. This is a sign of a lack of motivation. I can take back all subsidiaries from you. You do not make any effort. Plus, this kind of job is perfectly suited for people like you. I got her. People like me? What do you mean? She did not say a word. You know more than me that all meetings are being recorded for your safety and mine, right? She didn't say a word. I'm done with you. I'll report that to the right authorities. Long story short, her manager got involved. They wanted to avoid drama. They agreed that my counselor would be investigated and I would not have to attend any meetings until further notice. Not a big revenge, but I was happy enough. Next problem was with my taxes. As I became legally able to work, I had to declare my taxes like any other citizen, which is what I did. I don't know why, but they changed my gender from Mr. to Mrs. as well as misspelling my name quite a bit. We're required to pay the residency taxes for the year prior, which is what I did. But then I moved abroad to try to get an opportunity outside my home country. I made sure to have paid all my taxes, but it seems the tax office sent me some residency taxes to be paid at my former place, even though I changed my residency back to my parents' location so they could update me on any issue. For the first three years, I heard nothing, but then my bank account got locked, and I received an email from the tax office that I would be charged with extra charges due to late payment. I never received any mail. They told me they've sent too many mails to my previous address even using the official bailiff and charging me extra money. You do know that I don't live in the country, right? It's been three years. They say, you haven't paid for the tax on the year behalf. I say, I did. They say, you need to bring physical proof. It doesn't matter if you're overseas. This is your mistake, therefore your responsibility. I say, I won't travel 1,200 kilometers just to deliver you one document. I asked my sister to bring the required document and proof of payment to the tax office. This is not your name, they answered. It is my name. I came to your office many times to tell you you made a mistake on my gender and misspelled my name. Your staff told me that this would have been updated. It has never been. My sister also got angry and took the issue in her hands. After showing emails and all the proof that I had that I was in the right, they just decided to keep the problem on hold for now. Happy ending? Heck no. The same problem happened the year after, same tax, same wrong gender, same misspelling, for 10 years. And 10 times my bank account got locked due to legal issues. I had enough and took a few days off to fly away from the other side of the world to deal with the issue myself. I politely talk and show 10 years of email and proof to the tax office plus the price of my flight to come back in the country to deal with that. They simply said, Oh, I wasn't in charge of that. Not my problem. Shall we restart from zero? Would it be okay for you? I say, Alright, but who's going to pay for all those extra charges and my flight ticket? They say, Oh, we understand it's quite an issue, but this is not our responsibility. I say, The tax office made a problem on my account for something that is not my responsibility, and you're not going to take responsibility for that? They nodded. Unfortunately, you can't win against the government. However, I asked the staff to show me my account and my gender that had been changed from their system and asked if I could take pictures, just in case, you know. The staff approved. Guess what? The same problem happened the year after. I had enough. I sent all the copies, pictures, and scripts to my sister, and she charged back to the tax office. But it took time as COVID hit us, and most people had to deal with that by emails, unfortunately. This time, however, the person in charge of my case was a different one, 
My sister explained the whole situation to that new person in charge, and he told her, That is very strange. He asked her for a copy of all emails, as it includes the name of the people I've talked to. I'll have a look at it, he said. Few days later, my name was officially corrected, as well as my gender. I was told by my sister that I opened the Pandora box, and some people in charge of my issue were investigated. A few days later, I also received at my parents' home two nice checks, with the amount matching all the extra charges, excluding my flight ticket. I got ripped off through the years, on my bank account, with a small letter stating, Sorry for the trouble you went through. Here's the money that was taken by mistake on your bank account. Our deepest apologies, the country tax office. And I was finally free. It doesn't end there. After having graduated from university, I started traveling the world as a tra- I started traveling the world as a traveling bartender and bar slash restaurant manager. In the end, I remained in the hospitality field I was desperately trying to run away from, but that became fine. No problem, as I got more self-confident in my skills. Among the countries I've been working, I went to Canada and managed a Mexican restaurant. In my free time, I went on a Tinder date. Spoiler, it was awful. I always wear black pants and a black long sleeve shirt, at work and outside work. Can't help it. I'm a little piggy and black is good to hide stains. We went to a bar. The girl had no special conversation and drank a few cocktails, and of course was expecting me to pay the whole bill. I was planning to pay, but I would have appreciated if she could ask first how to manage the bill. Not waiting for me to pay the bill, as I think that women and men are equal and work. Therefore, everyone can pay. Plus, she was probably making more money than me. I paid the whole bill and was ready to go on my way. She stopped me and asked if I was interested in getting dinner together. I unfortunately agreed and she took me to one of the hypest restaurants in town. Chinese restaurant quite average. Basically, you have a lot of Chinese frozen food. You pick whatever you want, and the chef will cook it for you. Waiters wear black pants and t-shirts with the restaurant logo on their chest. I stayed waiting at the table, as my date was busy taking pictures for her Instagram, telling me how much fun she was having while I was yawning on the inside. Some guests a few table away kept staring at me, and then started to tap their fingers on the table. I later learned that it was a Chinese habit to tell waiters they want their tea to be refilled. As I didn't know what was going on, I just ignored it. As I was getting bored and drank all my tap water, I decided to spare myself some trouble and decided to refill my water at the water station myself. On my way there, out of nowhere these guys from that table just put their bottle in my hands and yelled some Chinese obscenities. Sorry, what? I just asked. The guys kept yelling at me while snapping their fingers. I didn't understand what they were talking about. I'm Asian, yeah, but not Chinese. I don't understand what you're talking about. Please use English. One guy slammed the table and yelled with a very strong Chinese accent. Get us some water, you lazy brat. How dare you stay flirting with some guests while you're supposed to be working? How can you not speak Chinese? Your parents should be ashamed. Having raised a kid not even able to speak Chinese, I simply reply... I don't work here. The other guy stood up. We want to see the manager. We want free food. How can this place be managed by such bad staff? I don't work here, and I'm not Chinese. We're in Canada, not in China, I yelled back. Just because I'm Asian doesn't mean I work here. If you paid more attention to the staff than just playing on your smartphone, you would have guessed that I don't wear a uniform. The guy still looked at me and then realized I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt and no logo. They didn't even apologize, and just took the bottle back and mumbled some words. But I'm not tolerating this kind of behavior and yelled back. Are you happy to have brought so much attention on us, disturbing another guest on a date, and yelling at him for no good reason? Shame on you. I yelled loudly enough that real staff had to come call me down. But the date wasn't over yet. Oh no. About 15 minutes later, I went again to get some water and another Chinese cooking staff started yelling at me in Chinese. I replied with the most clever answer, Uh, what? The cook guy kept yelling some words I couldn't understand and then got out of the kitchen to yell at me louder. Food! Bring food! You're not paid to drink water! Hurry up! The chef took me by the arm and dragged me in the station where food is delivered and put some plates in my hands. Hurry up, no time, last warning or get out, we busy. I don't work here, I told you, I'm a customer. 
The guy yelled back in Chinese as I started to feel angry again. Then one server came surprised and asked what happened. They spoke in Chinese and I think I got a slight idea about what they talked about as the cook guy looked at me pale white, perhaps realizing his mistake. He then started to apologize again in broken English and the server did the same for whatever reason. We got a small Chinese discount, but truly the food was awful. The date girl kept taking pictures of the food and was just unsure about which picture to use for her Insta. By the time she chose, the food was already cold. And of course, when the time came to pay for the bill, she just stared at the door, ignoring the bill. I paid and still gave 15% tips as the servers were not responsible for the drama. After the date, she told me she had fun and would like to perhaps have lunch again later on. I told her, there's no need to go for another date. She can just send me the receipts of her lunch, as she seems to find her smartphone more interesting than actual conversation. I got plenty of stories like this. Do we need a small conclusion? I work in Japan now, although the country's dealing with some discrimination, I kind of accept it, as indeed, I'm a foreigner here. I just hate being treated like a stranger in my home country. In fact, I appreciate being pointed out as a foreigner, because that is what I am here. I worked in more than 20 countries, and I never felt prouder of being a foreigner. That is my identity. Okay guys, be honest. Whenever you went out to a restaurant, have you ever stopped what you were doing to take a picture of the food you got served? Let me know in the comments down below. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. If you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.